Hello world, welcome to the 16th video on my YouTube channel and the second in my Zillow API playlist. If you want to watch me build my own Jarvis-like digital assistant like the ones you see in Iron Man, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification icon so you always know where when I post a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I can pull the Zestimate from Zillow for every house in my neighborhood. A recent comment on my channel asked me to zoom in on my code when I showed off. And so I've increased the font, so hopefully that helps. But if this is your first time watching one of my videos, just know this is not a tutorial. So I don't mind sharing the code, but I don't have a GitHub or anything like that. And there will be some functions that I won't show the code for um, due to my own proprietary reasons for what I want to use it for. But I hope you enjoy the increased font. I hope it helps somebody. And so I have an Excel sheet saved in my directory. It's up here and it's a normal Excel sheet. And in it, it has all 554 homes in the neighborhood I live in. So using the Zillow API, we're going to iterate through each one and get this estimate. And then we're going to print it in the console. So first, I'm going to call this function. I have called it neighborhood test. Okay. And then in the console, you're going to see it pull up and iterate through 554 of the homes and give you the estimate for each one. So here we go. I will run this. It's going to go pretty fast once it pulls it up. So right now it should be going to Zillow. And there we go. It is now printing up each home in the neighborhood and printing out this estimate. And so there are some homes that have an error. And so I've caught that error using a try catch method. And when we go through the code, I will show you why. And the reason why is because Zillow's not recognizing that as a valid address. So I'm not sure why, what combination of letters and numbers. But anyways, I'm not going to show you all 554, but there it goes. Okay, so let's look at the code. So first we're going to run the neighborhood test. So first you show, I'm using what's called XLRD. So you can use pip install XLRD and then you import XLRD. Okay, and then you make a location of where that file is. So I, ca I keep all my files in the directory, it makes it simple. But once I, you know, move all my files to a uh, central place where multiple uh, versions or instances of my Jarvis-like program can access them, that will change. But for now, the location is right here, and that's the title of the Excel sheet. So if you're new, just know that it has to be called exactly, and it has to be uppercase, lowercase, exactly. Okay, then we're going to call a variable called workbook, xlrd.open.workbook, and then you're going to pass it the location that we just said, the file location. And then you're going to create a variable called sheet, and you say workbook that you just called sheet by index zero. So that's the very first worksheet in the workbook. And then we're going to look at the sheet. We're going to start at the cell value of zero, zero. So the zero width comma uh, row in the zero width column. Okay, so the iteration used it, Python uses for the I in range. And so for I, so for however many rows in the range of the available rows, 
I want you to call each of the cell value, which is just the address, an address. Right? Then I want you to concatenate. So if you are new to computer programming, concatenate is where you add two strings together or two anything together and make it one. So that variable address and city is taking the address called here and then concatenating a comma Bossier City comma Louisiana. Okay, then we're going to try for each one, each row, so in this case for each address, we're going to get the Zestimate data using the API.get search results method, which is the Zillow API method. We're going to pass it the key. And if you don't know how this is working, go to my first video and watch it all the way through. So there's three variables or arguments you have to pass this, get search results. First is the key, then the address and city, which is the variable we created here, which is an address, the street address, plus the concatenated Bossier City in Louisiana, plus the postal code, which I have above as its own global variable for now. Then you pass that to a dictionary. Okay, I called that the address dictionary. And then you use a normal method called get dictionary, get dict, right? Then I'm going to create a new variable called amount from this dictionary. And I, I'm going to get the Zestimate and amount. So if you're not familiar with how dictionaries, I talk about it in the first Zillow API video in this playlist. But basically, the Zestimate has a bunch of items you can pull. One of them that I want is the amount here. So in the Zestimate dictionary, I want the amount pair. Then I'm going to pass that into what's called the currency locale, or I don't know if it's local E or locale, but I want it to make it a currency. And then this also makes it a string. So if I wanted to voice activate this, it would be able to read it as a string instead of an integer. And then for each address in the range, so in my case 554, you're going to print each one saying that address is worth the amount. Okay, Zillow comes with an error. It's not a very good error. I wish the error documentation was better. But it, if I do get an error, it will say print an error occurred with this address and then list the address. And we saw that when we ran it. Okay, so that's the method. That's how you uh, pull it. In the first video, I pulled it for just my address. Now I'm going through all 554 addresses. Okay, this is using the XLRD function, or li import library. There's another library called Pandas, and it's probably the more ubiquitous library for Excel handling. So I've also created one for that. So let me show you that one. Let's call that um, pandas1. OK. So this is the pandas. And it's slightly similar, but it's uh, it has some extra things that I have not excluded yet. So what it does is it finds the name of each one. So the name just happens to be a number because it only has addresses and it's a data type of object and then it gave me all of the addresses here okay very similar but the reason why I use this was is because panda is much better pandas is much better at um, managing Excel files. So that Excel read, and there's another one called Excel write, is great for just that, reading and writing. Simple, but Pandas has much more functions to handle Excel, especially when you have to start doing math, which we're going to do. So in the next Zillow API video, I'm going to append the square foot of each house. And so just like we pulled the amount, we can pull the square feet of each house, add that to the column for each address, then get the Zestimate, and then do the Zestimate divided by the square foot to give you an average per square feet for each home in my neighborhood. And then I want it to print on the console, these houses 
are currently below, have as estimate below the average. And then you can also get a link to each one. So I would like for it to open the Internet Explorer and show me each one. And this is important because in about a year I'm going to be purchasing a second house and I want instant equity by buying a house for a good value. So Pandas also creates what's called a data frame, right? So I'm not going to go through this code because in the next video series I'll show you a complete Panda code that I've implemented. But Panda also allows you to create a simple data frame with all the data you need and then you can use it for machine learning, which of course is the ultimate goal of my Jarvis-like program. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please watch it all the way through. That helps channels, little channels like mine. And then if you want to see the next Zillow API video, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification icon so you can see when I post the next one. Hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye world.